so uh, when uh, we talk about vacuum the pressure is very important the term you might ask me that do you need to remember these values said yes not like the yesterday's table okay the conversion table even if you don't remember it's still acceptable but this you need to remember if you are doing a course on vacuum technology the values sh should be known to you okay so what happens is uh, if you want to reach this stage of ultra high vacuum or very high vacuum you cannot reach it with a single instrument you need a series of instruments for that okay so the first instrument that we are going to study is uh, a rotary pump which is basically used to achieve this vacuum level so what i do is this is basically called roughing okay it's called roughing so you basically get an approximate vacuum so this approximate vacuum will be in this range so whatever values we have seen yesterday so this is the range so within this and this value we are actually getting an approximate vacuum so if you compare it with that uh, table you can see that how low the pressure would be okay and if you go further and further we are going to get a very low pressure which is nothing but called the ultra high vacuum so if you are doing a moderately sensitive experiment a medium vacuum or high vacuum should work but if you are doing an experiment which is uh, uh, you need you need a total uh, there should not be any kind of material within the system then you need a very high or an ultra high vacuum okay and all of these actually depends on the pumping speed so when we talk about a pump we actually have a motor okay so if you have um, observed a, a vacuum cleaner or you have observed a water pump both of them we have some kind of motor okay you have basically has a got, got a motor we have a fan attached to it and it will basically keep on rotating the faster it rotates the faster will be the water flow at the top of the building or the faster will be the suction of the vacuum okay or the suction power of the vacuum for getting all the dirt that you are cleaning using a vacuum cleaner so basically this pumping speed decides it this pumping speed is very important how fast the pump can move now try to understand this that if we device has got a, a, a motor which moves or rotates at a very fast speed uh the device is going to wear out very fast right it's going to burn the motor and all so obviously the device should be made up of very uh, highly durable instrument or me mechanical parts okay highly durable mechanical parts so this pumping speed actually decides the price of the pump so if you want to achieve a very high vacuum you should have a very high pumping speed and for that the price of the vacuum pump definitely goes high it's costly okay so that's why when you buy a vacuum pump for a car okay you buy a vacuum pump for a car you can get it within 1000 rupees okay but if you want it for your home and you want to buy a branded a good vacuum cleaner the prices will go up okay because those are stronger vacuum cleaners for a car you don't need a very strong vacuum cleaner okay it's like cleaning and all this so those are the reasons why the price of the pump goes up that is because of the pumping speed so this is a very rough schematic okay nothing to uh, uh, like a point out or level okay here much what here means that this pi is nothing but the pressure at the inlet it means that at the point of vacuum pump what is the pressure and this is the pressure of the system so suppose this is a box okay let's say it's a sealed box and you want to drag out all the air so what you do you connect a pipe and you drag out all the air so some of the parameters that we know in this should be the pump speed so that is sp okay that is the pump speed q is nothing but something which is called the throughput okay a throughput refers to something which tells you how fast the speed can be achieved or how fast we can actually uh, take out all the air from the system so if you look into the mathematical relation throughput is given by p into v dot p is the pressure okay and v dot is nothing but dv by dt right so volumetric flow rate this v is volume not voltage uh, not uh, velocity or voltage okay it's volume so this v dot is nothing but called the volumetric flow rate yesterday you remember we talked about uh, stokes law right so there also we have the relation of 6 pi eta r v and so on right so uh, we 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 when we talk about this coefficient of viscosity again this volume comes into the picture okay so here also we have got v dot which is nothing but the volumetric flow rate 
And then finally we have got PI which is the vacuum pump pressure of the inlet. So at the inlet we have got something which is the vacuum pump pressure. You might be thinking what is this pump plus? This plus usually basically denotes a rotor. Okay, the rotor basically is nothing but you can say you have a motor and you have attached a fan to it. Okay, so that is also there. Uh, something like uh, you remember your, you know your kitchen exhaust fan right? Kitchen exhaust fan. So what do you what do they do? You basically have the kitchen and you have somewhere where you're cooking, right? And you have all the um, gases that are basically coming out from your cooking. So what happens is you have a small outlet on the top, and the fan is attached there, okay? And the fan is uh, kept up uh, outside, so it's not rotating in this direction. Even this fan can be used as an exhaust fan. Just rotate it outside. So what is happening? It is moving in the reverse direction with respect to the gas. So it is dragging out the gas from inside to outside. That is how exhaust fan works, right? As simple as that. So simply vacuum pump also does the same thing. It is going to drag out all the air from there. Okay? So this is the basic working. There is a very simple working formula for this pump speed which is written as Q divided by Pi. Okay? So Q is nothing but this uh, throughput. And if you look into the dimension, you will see that it comes out to be beta Q per second. Okay? Because Pi is dependent on flow rate, so there is dV by dt. So if you look into this, this will become per second. Okay? And this is nothing but meter cube. Okay? Then we just look into this. So this is basically called the pump speed. Okay? And then we have got the system pumping speed. This is the pump speed for this worker pump. How fast the system gets pumped? It is basically called the system pumping speed, which is Q divided by P, pressure of the system. This is basically the pressure of the system. So there are two pressures here, one at the vacuum pump and one at the pressure of the system. Okay. Now we are going to categorize the different vacuum pumps that we have. Okay. So we are going to categorize those vacuum pumps. So the classification, uh, based on this we have got different types of vacuum pump and some of the vacuum pump are already there in our syllabus. Okay? We are going to study some of them, Okay. not all of them. Uh, when you talk about vacuum pump, basically depends on whether you are transferring the gas, gas or you are doing an entrapment. Okay? So by, by transfer of gas, I think we all of us know because we are uh, trying to drag out the air okay? or we are going to apply some kind of force so that the gas gains some kind of kinetic energy and moves out of the system. That is called transfer. What is entrapment is uh, you have a system, okay? this, is not, this is a different kind of effectiveness, we have to look into the system. Suppose you have got a system okay and there are gas and suppose there are more gas here okay what you do is you entrap this system you block this so this gas is not going to interact with outside gas and then you can use a pump and drag out the remaining gases okay depends on what kind of system you are using okay so that's basically called entrapment and that is why it's called gas trapped okay the gas is getting, getting trapped and then we are creating the vacuum okay trapping the gases so that is what is entrapment is all about. In gas transfer, we have got the positive displacement just like uh, water pumps. Okay? So we create a pressure difference and drag out the water. On the other hand, we also have some kinetic systems where we basically uh, give some kind of energy to the gas molecules and depends on how much the kinetic energy the gas molecule gains. Okay? Uh, we are going to study these two specifically. Okay? So we are going to study only about gas transfers. Okay, the vacuum pump based on these two and not on this. Okay, this one I think we have already said about cryo pump in general. Cryo means you want to achieve a very temp low temperature, so you use cryogenic pumps. So this is a good idea. Okay, but we are not going to study this right now. And the positive displacement, we basically have got four types. Okay, so all of us uh, uh, have to have to look at this. This is basically called rotary uh, sliding wave. This is rotary wave. Okay, rotary wave, sliding wave. So you basically have got a a flyer kind of thing, okay. You basically have got two wings kind of thing which keeps on rotating and dragging out the air and all. So these are basically called waves, okay. So we have that. So there is sliding wave, rotary wave, roots, dry pump. Okay, so there are four types. As we look into the working, we are going to understand what exactly they do. Okay, let me not discuss much on this. We are going to look into the rotary, we are going to look into roots out of these four, yeah, these two. Okay. Now rotary pump is something which is very commonly used. This is basically called a roughing pump. That means the low vacuum that we actually have shown on the table, that vacuum is achieved by using a rotary pump. Okay. After that, what people do? We want to have more uh, vacuum, so people use a separate another pump, and diffusion pump is mostly used. Okay. And then there is also turbo molecule. So as the word word turbo suggests, 
right? If you have played uh, online games or racing games, Turbo Speed or all, Need for Speed, what that? Need for Speed, hello, listen. So, this is what you call Turbo World Mode. You call it Dhamma, okay? Full speed. So basically, Turbo means something which is like uh, you you can use it to achieve a uh, ultimate value. So basically, if you want to get the ultra high vacuum, you need a combination of rotary pump, diffusion pump, turbo molecular pump, all three. So you have instruments where they are using uh, uh, research work and they are um, creating a very high vacuum. Basically, they are using rotary diffusion turbo molecular. So these three are the most important to know. So even if you are doing any kind of research after your MSc, and if you come across any vacuum system, most of these systems will be using this, this, or this. Okay? Now if you go to our lab, there is something which is called a vacuum oven. Anyone of you have seen the vacuum oven in our lab? Anyone of you know about the vacuum oven we have in our lab? So in our old lab, mein, we have a vacuum oven. Okay? When you have your practicals or you are in the lab, at least I can show it to you. There is a small pump kept at the bottom. Okay? Uh, that is basically nothing but a rotary pump that we have. Okay? I think they are using diffusion pump might be. Diffusion pump might be used if the range is more. So it depends on the range. So I think it might be a diffusion pump also. So I will show you that that is basically a pump on which some oil is also put in. Okay? So you need to change the oil that is also important. There is a pipe connected and then there is an outlet pipe. And you have got a um, uh, oven. You got the oven there. And you have got the pump here. Okay, any kind of pump you can use. And you have an outlet and an inlet. So what is happening is this is dragging out the air. This is dragging out the air. Okay, and then there is a vacuum is created within the oven. What happens if the vacuum is created? What happens to the temperature? Suppose I want to uh, evaporate water. Evaporate water. If the vacuum is created, that means the pressure is lowered. If the pressure is lowered, what will happen to the boiling temperature? Will it look get low or high? It will get low, right? So you will have a lower boiling point. So what happens is, if you want to dry a sample faster, you can use a vacuum pump. If you dry a sample in a proper way, you can use a vacuum uh, oven. You can put the samples inside, you want to dry it, it will dry very fast. Very efficiently, very effectively. Okay? And that's why even vacuum pumps are used. Okay? To create a vacuum system. Just like in a vacuum oven. Is it clear? Okay? So that is the classification that we have. And uh, hopefully we are going to study in the next few classes Zoo's Rotary Diffusion Turbo. So I target these four and uh, along with these we are going to get new terms, different kind of terms. Okay, so we have to check into that. So